Hello and welcome, uh, Philip Banze for DCTP.tv from the DLD 2016 in Munich. My next guest is Jennifer Dunks from Fraunhofer Institute, a uh, well-known German research institute. Uh, you worked at Ford for 10 years mm -hmm. or so. So first, welcome to the program. Thank and you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about autonomous driving, uh, autonomous cars and how um, this might change our cities, our traffic, the way we behave in traffic. So if we had an aut aut autonomous vehicle today, would you buy one? Uh, uh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, most of our time today is spent, more than 90% of our time is spent in traffic, congestion, trying to find a parking space. So today I would um, absolutely drive autonomous car for the safety, for the insurance, for the value of the time. And self-driving mean me behind the steering wheel, uh, Self, really self-driving as a man. Do you think it's uh, it's going to be a hobby one day, I an expensive hobby provided <laughs> uh, by I don't know automobile providers? Well, I think um, if you look at the entire car industry and what it was built on, it was built on this driving experience, the acceleration, the zero to sixty, hitting the gas pedal. I think that's that's it's fun. It's um, really enjoyable, and that's what the the OEM set for their mottos for their companies. That doesn't go away when we have autonomous driving. The desire and the enjoyment from that will still exist. We just have to find new channels that allow people to drive a car, so maybe on a test track or somewhere else as a hobby. And where are we right now in terms of autonomous driving, the technology? Where are we right now? Well, what you see on the road already is you see all the, the functions that exist on the highway. So you see lanes change assist, distance control, the new autopilot pilot from Tesla, um, parking assists. Uh. It's just going to develop more and more, and the next step will be something with parking in the, the garages uh, or in the park houses, that we'll see automated parking in the park houses, and it'll go sort of step by step um, to this fully autonomous um, system. And what are the biggest challenges right now? Um, I think right now, the biggest challenge should be that we figure out what role are the different companies playing. So uh. what is going to be the role in the future of BMW or Mercedes with an autonomous capsule? Um, are they still doing the interior, the exterior, or some new player coming in and designing the interior and providing new services? Is BMW and Daimler going to get into the service field, and we already saw some speeches here today that they are, they plan on it, but how can they compete then with putting Facebook in the car or other um, IT um, companies that want to come in and take the entire interior of the car for that user experience? Yeah, that's why, because Google and Apple are really trying to get into this market, and some say, well, a car will be more or less a computer with some some packaging around and the software will come from Google or Apple or Amazon, Facebook and German automakers will only provide the tires which they don't make themselves already uh, and um, all the packaging. So where do you see this going? Now the German automakers bought at least a huge mapping service, yes. the Nokia here, which is yep. a really a, a, a core uh, part of an autonomous vehicle. Where do you see it going? How is the German industry set up there? So I would probably quote um, sort of the mottos that the startups have to take. The traditional German OEMs now need to pivot. Yeah, they need to pivot in their traditional thinking, in their models, and they need to partner. And you already see it now, Ford's um, partnering with Google or working together with Google, GM's investing in Lyft. Mercedes and, 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 and um, Tesla. In Tesla, yeah. exactly. So, we're going to see, or we should see, more and more of these um, partnerships coming through. And then in that new landscape, BMW, um, Mercedes, et cetera, need to figure out what piece of the puzzle I ha do I have and what can I offer the customer? And that's, I think, that that's really the debate. That's what's up for debate right now is where are they going to position themselves in? Apple and Google are coming in, it's no question. But what part will they take of this um, mobility mobility as a service? And do you think that the German automakers will have to develop their own car operating system? The software? I would love it if they did, uh, because then they could own or they can continue to um, have the customer interface, which is what they have today. And when they lose that to an IT provider, 
Um, then you lose your brand loyalty. Then you lose um, this identity or emotional connection with the product. So I think in order for them to keep the product um, connection with the customer, they can't lose the IT interface. And when I was in cinema, I don't know, three, three, four weeks ago, it, I saw the first ad from VW where you didn't see the car. You, you didn't see the car at all. The ad was only about interface, user experience, okay. me in the car, uh -huh. the display. Yeah, I haven't seen anything okay. of the interior design or the, the car itself. It was only about software user interface. So mm -hmm. that was the first thing I've saw, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen, seen mm -hmm. in, in this. But this is really the direction it is going, right? Y user experience. Do you have to control the user experience within the car? Exactly, and I think also um, from Dieter May today um, giving his speech, it's also these touch points. So um, how many touch points can um, BMW offer in their vehicles versus Facebook or versus Apple, and they need what to is, have. What does a touch point mean? So, how many times do you need to um, touch here? And you're going through um, the portal from BMW. So you're going through BMW Maps. You're going through BMW Parking. You're going through BMW um, Valet Service or BMW Shopping. Or um, now you're going through BMW to find a hotel that's nearby. Or are all of these touch points um, branded um, by Apple? Um, how, how is Spotify? How are you coming into these services? If, is it through a BMW interface or platform, or is it from a different one? And when it's not BMW, and you literally get in your car and you see nothing, except maybe the emblem, okay, and maybe not anymore because you don't have the steering wheel, So, but maybe the emblem sits somewhere, but you're not interacting, you're not getting a feeling or emotional experience then with, with the car. But, but isn't it already today the case that a, a BMW is not produced entirely by BMW. You have a lots of suppliers, and they not only supply BMW with their parts, but also other manufacturers. But they have to deal with this problem, with this unique uh, uh, feeling in their car already today. And how does it change in the new landscape? So today, I mean, in, um, in the state of Baden-Württemberg, for example, there's 440,000 people working directly or indirectly in the auto industry, but they're all suppliers. At the end of the day, the last um, person in the value chain is the OEM. It's yeah. BMW. Everything comes in and gets packaged and fits, and at the end, you have a BMW product. And where I think we can change, where that might be disrupted, is when there's now one more step to the value chain and now it's fleet owners, mobility providers like Uber. What happens when Uber now just buys a whole fleet of BMWs and Uber now has the end customer um, and now BMW is uh. a supplier. Now you're disrupting the whole value chain. And I think um, when you do a step like that, when you have less touch points because in the car these services are provided by IT companies or something like that, it's the traditional OEMs will struggle. And we have this kind of model already going on right now with this car sharing. Right now we have car to go and drive now. Okay, it's Mercedes and BMW and you drive a smart and a BMW, but say we both make a, a car sharing company which is not connected to BMW or VW, but we buy cars and we model them to our liking and to our brand yeah. and suddenly there's exactly. no direct customer relation anymore. No, we can say, okay, we want this many premiums, this is what we want on in the interior. Um, there's always going to be a diversity of vehicles on the road. I have no doubt about it. It's not that we're going to be all driving Google um, autonomous capsules around. It's not going to be that way. We're going to have premium, we're going to have limousines, we're going to have um, the range of vehicles that we have today. But whether or not you can hold this um, loyalty between those brands or whether or not the value chain gets disrupted and now they're just a supplier to fleet owners who do car sharing, that's maybe an interesting conversation to have. And, and the sales of new cars in Germany, they're, uh, they're basically plateauing at three million a year, basically. Do you think uh, car ownership in this new environment will be still a big thing or will we all use Uber or car sharing or make communities by sharing cars within a family or a neighborhood? Um, I think car ownership is still pretty strong. Yeah. I don't see any decline on that in the near term, but I think with autonomous driving, we're only now starting to envision what types of scenarios. So 
you know, we have a family, we have two kids, you take it, then it comes and picks me up, then I put it on autopilot back to home, it takes our, our daughter to music lessons or whatever. This is a whole new model of sharing. Now I'm just sharing with my family. Then Now that's no problem. Um, it's not sharing with a stranger. So I think now we're just looking at what types of um, sharing models actually exist, and there's so many that actually exist, um, and new models, but only contingent on these technologies like autonomous driving. Without that, um, I, I think the car ownership won't decrease significantly before autonomous driving comes. And how will it change without autonomous, autonomous cars? There's always this vision like there's a huge parking lot uh, uh, outside the city and uh, when I get up, uh, the system knows I get up and will have to go to work within, I don't know, next 30 minutes and uh, the car will leave the parking lot and stop in front of my house and I uh, get out and it's there in time and drives me to work. Is that a viable vision or is there different models? Um. You know, I work at the Fraunhofer Institute, yeah. so we're innovative and creative, and I'd like to keep all ideas and concepts on the table right now. I think, let's not discredit anything. Let's yeah. watch how the technology emerges. Let's watch where the money flows and the um, the players and how this develops. But I think um, there's a lot of different exciting um, concepts that we could envision. And I even saw some other cool concepts this week with um, using a couple park houses in the, in the city as sort of these holding points with fully charged charging capabilities to have all the cars electric park, be fully connected, like a little holding place, but um, Atarik also with their energy, so PV panels and this whole thing. And that's also a, a pretty cool idea that you don't have the double the traffic with all these cars going in and out. Yeah, so um, I think there's also so, some other models that would exist as well. And do you think all the future cars will be electric cars? I hope. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, German C Chancellor Merkel said we'll, we want to have I don't know how many cars. One million. One million in 2020. 2020. 2020. No. no. I mean, okay, we have 30,000 today. Yeah. Um, I think if you look at some of the research, it says maybe we could have 150,000 by 2020. But um, I think it's still moving in that direction. And with um, the trends of mega cities and the population growth, we have no choice but to answer um, with electric vehicles. Um, it and just what's, the, what's the biggest obstacle right now? Is it price? Is it charging stations? Is different charging standards? Is it, I mean, you cannot pay. I think you can, is this a, Eon has, or some other electrical provider has, has uh, a net in, in, in Hamburg and Munich and you cannot even pay with the same mechanism in, in Hamburg and Munich with the, although it's the same company so I drive electric I'm also completely uh. frustrated by uh. the um, infrastructure I also can't park and charge in Stuttgart um, I have to go to work to charge or something like this so it yeah the infrastructure is not there yet um, it can't compete um, from a price standpoint yet especially with where the The, the, the oil price is going right now. Um, but all of these things will keep keep going, keep um, emerging. And what I think the thing is, is that at some point we need to make a decision for our um, environmental sustainability picture. What do we want to do? How do we want our cities to look? Um, where do we, where's, where's our stance on CO2? And once we kind of get a um, an increase in, in interest, in understanding, in um, acceptance, I think then all these other things will quickly be figured out. It's not that the technology's not there, it's just that we don't somehow have a central driver yet um, to do it. We don't, the government, yeah, it's not pushing us like, like in China. Um, the price isn't there, so the consumer doesn't want it. And you can't, who's going to build an infrastructure when there's no business models and not enough cars to drive? So those are the topics we're working on oh right yeah, now. But I was wondering, because uh, often when something new comes up, which is very efficient and ecolo ecologically friendly, uh, it's you have to pay with, 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 I don't know, with comfort. It's not that nice and it's not that comfortable. But people who drove Teslas, are they are all amazed and say it's yeah. the best driving yeah. experience I've ever had. Yeah. Um, do you think that might help? I think it absolutely helps. I mean, um, I think what Tesla's done is amazing for electrification. Um, I'm really excited about what Elon Musk is doing. I mean, he's a genius and crazy and everything all wrapped in one. But to me, it's I, I'm so thankful for him some, somehow going out in front. 
Um, what we need though also is we need just participation. We need, um, at the Fraunhofer Institute, we have a fleet of 30 vehicles. Everybody drive them, try them, sit in them, experience uh. them, live them, understand what it means with the range, you know, the range anxiety. Actually drive it, understand, live it. Because um, everyone says, well, the hells are in range from 250 kilometers. Nobody's driving 250 kilometers. No, it's driving 250 <laughs> kilometers. You could read all the studies, but still the, the range anxiety is still somehow a discussion point. But I think the more we have um, the people experiencing and driving it, like driving a Tesla, it's just fun to drive. Um, so. And how, how will our cities change? Will, will there be less traffic? Because of course you envision a city without cars, lots of space, no noise, no pollution, um, yeah, more space for other activities apart from driving cars. Is it going to be less traffic or just different traffic? No, absolutely less traffic. Um, maybe, maybe you know, but the, the average car driving in the city at 50 kilometers per hour requires 140 square meters of space. That's more space than I live in with my family of four. It's an enormous amount of space. And now when you put in autonomous driving with car sharing and how close the vehicles can drive with electric um, electrification as well, you're going to see um, probably the amount of cars go down quite significantly. All right. And last question is, can do politics have to do anything apart from setting the goal, we want to have a million in 2020, uh, 2020. Do, do we need like subsidies or something like that? Absolutely, yeah? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I think we need um, money to support, especially, so imagine you're not BMW or Daimler, but you're a tier three supplier. You don't know if electric mobility is coming or autonomous driving is coming or is it a hype or when's it coming? And we need to somehow protect the risk that all these companies and um, s small, middle-sized companies are taking to stay active. I mean, this is the um, in Germany at least. This is the um, this is their strength. This is their, their this is their industry, and we need the support from the government to say, hey, take these risks, get into this field, and we'll be there to back you up. All right, Jennifer. Thanks so much. Okay, thank for you. your time. Jennifer Dunks from the Fraunhofer Institute. My name is Philip Banzer from DCTP.TV from the DLD 2016 in Munich. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>